head over to miniaturemarket.com. We have thousands of board games at discounted prices like Soundbox. Hello, my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we're going to be making all sorts of sounds. Uh, no, no, not beatbox sounds. We're going to be talking about like all sorts of sounds, like airports and bathrooms and bombs and anything you can think of. Laundry. Uh, today, we're taking a look at Soundbox. This is a party game from Horrible Guild. I'm going to allow you to play along with us at the end. So watch the whole overview, then I'll see you at the other side. In Soundbox, you're trying to cooperatively get someone who's wearing these glasses to guess which sound you're making. But it's not just you that's making them, everyone's doing it simultaneously. How do you do a yoga class, detective, roller coaster, which is called in storm, printer, bathroom? How do you make those sounds in about 15 seconds, all of us simultaneously getting this person to try to guess them? Well, let's find out. So here's most of the game board set up. We're trying to get this little icon here, which looks like a video game character, uh, going all the way up here. If it gets all the way up there, then everybody will win. But as wrong guesses are made, the heart is gonna be dropping down, and if we ever get here, we all lose. At the beginning of the game, you start with 10 randomized uh, things here, and some of them are the ones that I was just mentioning to you. And there might be some other ones like printers, bathroom, nightmare, airplane crashing, police station. So what happens is there's 10 of them. So in this bag are tokens labeled one through 10. Now, one player is going to be the guesser. They're gonna have these glasses. They're gonna put them on in a minute. But first, this guesser gets to look at all of them out here. So they have an idea of what sounds might be being made, but it's gonna be happening simultaneously, so it's a little tough. So everybody else is gonna grab a token. Like I would secretly get this and look at it. Nobody else knows what I have. It's a five. So in this case, I'm actually gonna be doing a storm. It's just out of frame right now. So I put this face down in front of me. So all the other players that are not this one are going to get a token and get ready to do the actual acting. And then the guesser will put on the glasses and someone will flip the timer and you have a roughly 13 seconds. Everyone is simultaneously making these noises any way they want. Um, you can't like hum songs that you know. You can't say words and things like that. There's some rules, but look at that, timer's up. Okay, once the timer's up, the guesser will take these off. And there's some actual strategy as to which one they pick. They're trying to, to pick all of them, of the ones that they heard, if they could. But let's say, you know, they say, you know what, I'm pretty sure that was the bathroom. They'll, they'll point to this. If someone had a number seven, then the player that had it would flip it up in, in front of them, we'd all celebrate, and we would remove this card from the board. It would go in front of the guesser to help us track points at the end of the round. Now, let's say, hey, you know what? I think uh, the guesser said, you know what? I think there's a storm and someone did indeed have a five. Then we go like this. And they say, you know what? I think uh, this was a nightmare. Nobody had nightmare. The round ends, which is the strategy of the game because this player needs to try to get the ones that he's most sure of, he or she, because if their first pick was nightmare, nobody had it, round over, you get no points. Now, for each player that still had a token that was not guessed, they'll flip it over and they'll go down that many points. So one here and two here. So we're going down here. Now, if we get to here, we lose. Now, the ones that the guesser did get correct, one point for each of those. So it's going to go one, two. And as I get there, what this means is these are going to go in the bag now, which means before we only had 10 sounds going on. Now, or up, to, you know, there's 10 sounds to choose from that are being done. They're not all being done. Only one per player that's not in the glasses are actually doing the sound. But now there's more choices, more possibilities that will be coming out next round because the cards that are over here stay if they weren't guessed, but the ones that were removed. Now the cards that were removed were replaced. So now there's buildings and, and whacking your pinky toe, but all the other ones are sort of there. So you have a little bit of memory of what was there. You can always see them as well. And now again, we have two new possibilities. So those come out as well. And then you pass these glasses to the next player to the left and you just keep going this way. Now, as the game goes on, you start going further and further down these tracks. As you pass this or this, you give this to one of the players that's not the guesser of that round. And they essentially have to do two sounds. So they take two things. So they're doing them twice uh, and you could end up having two people doing that. It helps balance the games as you're going down. It gets a little harder, but then as you get worse and worse, they actually get removed. So it kind of balances back. It just makes the game a little bit more balanced. Now again, you're trying to get all the way up to 20 until this gets there. If you do, you win. If this gets to here before you get to 20, well, you've lost. If you're playing with six or seven players, there's a second player that wears glasses. They sit basically opposite of the guesser. They don't get to look either, but they're listening as well. And when the sounds stop, this player can sort of play back 
with their own mouth the things that they heard. It just allows this player to be able to remember or hear a lot of the things that maybe they didn't hear or try to remember them, as they basically have a second person who's quote unquote recording them with their own ears and then playing them back with their own mouth after the timer's up. Okay, so play along with us. Here is a game set up. This is us. We were playing this with a four player game. Let's look at these different possibilities. We're going to have you basically be the guesser here. So, number one, we got protests going down, boxing match, robot, yoga class, metropolis, brushing teeth, fisherman, detective, bungee jumping, bathroom, digging for treasure, billiard room, pond, tennis match, and storm. Okay, now I want you to close your eyes. In a minute here, I'm going to play a bunch of us doing these sounds for about 13 seconds, and then we'll tell you when to open your eyes. Go. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> can I take these off now? Yes. All right. Enough of that hilarity. So now you can basically open your eyes. You're taking the mask off. And you're going to look at these. And let's have you play along here. You're going to pick the one that you think is most likely that was happened. Then you're going to pick the second one and hopefully the third one. Keep those in order since I can't interact with you. I can't tell you whether you're right or wrong in the, on the fly. So pick your number one, two, and three uh, choices in that order. Pause the video here, write those down in order, and then we'll come back and find out what we did. All right, so now I hope you've written it all down. Let's go to our discussions and see if you got them right and listen to how it worked with us. So this should be an easy one for you. <laughs> well, 10 was hurt for sure. Yeah! Bathroom, okay. Now we just... Okay, what else you got there? Um, you got bathroom, right? Oh, six? Six is brushing teeth. Anyone? No. No. What was yours? So it's, oh, it sounded like a saw or like a, a, a motor or something. So uh, I was like, oh, brushing teeth. No, I, I was hoping it was. Fisherman? Let uh, me just guess. Did that students? not sound like a... Do it again? <laughs> so now I get it. It sounded yeah. like a saw. And so I was looking for that. You have one. Hold on, let me, oh, let me yeah, see if I can guess this for fun. It was four. Yoga. We already <laughs> have a sound for that. <laughs> what was yours? It was like a moan. <laughs> Woo! Definitely yoga. <laughs> Digging for treasure. Oh my god. How many hearts did we lose? Oh my god. <gasps> all right, so how'd you do? How many did you get? Did you get one, two, or all three of them? Let me know in the comments. Yeah, I hope you liked uh, playing along with us and seeing how fun and crazy and just silly this game is. It's a ton of fun. When we were playing this, it made me think of like a combination of two different games. One called When I Dream, which is one where somebody wore a mask and they're trying to listen to one word clues and guess what it is from people, but some of them are trying to throw them off. It's not quite cooperative, it's kind of semi. And Top 10, which was a Spiel des Jahres nominee this year because you're, uh, it's a cooperative game where you're trying to go in order of the one you think is the most likely to happen, which is what you're doing here, and I love that. So I feel like it's like When I Dream and Top 10 had a baby. If you've played both of those, you'll know what I'm talking about. This game has fun callbacks because you'll be hearing people that are doing sounds, and a lot of this game is just obviously just the silliness of it. But a lot of it also is like, Okay, I think it was this one. And everyone's like, nope. They're like, what? You weren't doing that? No, this sound, it wasn't a missile. That was like me walking through a swamp. And you're like, that's walking through a swamp? Like, what the heck are you talking about? And like, so later on, someone gets that and they try to like parrot or mimic the way that the other person did it that you had this conversation about. And so you tend to have these fun callbacks from ones that you've missed. And that's always fun in games. Party games tend to do that a lot. And, and this one does it great. Now, those that have stage fright, I know plenty of people that don't like to play party games that they're like doing something in front of everybody, like charades or any type of thing when somebody's like put on the spot. I feel like people that have stage fright can still like this game because when you're making noises, everyone's doing it, and the person you're doing it for has a blindfold on, right? The only time you might feel like you're on stage fright is because if you're the guesser, but again, you have glasses on, and then when you get them up, you're just pointing to a card. You're not acting, you're not doing it. So I think that this is a great thing for those that don't 
that, that are kind of afraid to be in front of a lot of people or do a lot of things. People, if you have stage fright in party games, I think you'll still like this one, but it still gives a feeling for many of those party games where that does happen. I like that the difficulty ramps up, where as you get more and more right, you're gonna be getting more and more sounds to choose from, which means naturally it's gonna be getting harder. Then you're gonna be getting double sounds. I like that the, the difficulty balances. So the better you get, more double sounds come where someone's gonna be doing more than one sound, but then as you, you, if you start to like fall down the track and do worse, then those get removed. It sort of like reduces those. It, it keeps the game balanced all the way through. I like that. I like if you're playing with the, the higher player counts, you have the recorder, person that's listening to all the sounds and they're sort of playing them back with their own mouth to the guesser to help them remember them because there's gonna be so many more sounds going on. Uh, it works well with the higher player counts with that. Uh, this is an absolutely, I, th I think this, this is just an amazing design spread from these designers. Uh, these are the same designers uh, that brought us King's Dilemma, Dragon Castle, Evergreen from, from, from uh, Gen Con this year. I mean, strategy games. And then they go out and they do this crazy thing. I mean, it's, it's, I always love it when you see designers do things that are very different. I mean, when's the last time you saw Stefan Feld design a party game that worked well? Right? I don't know. Maybe he has. I just haven't played one. Uh, but I think it's a testament to designers. You know you're an, like a top-notch designer. And I'm not saying Stefan Fell's not a top-notch designer. His, his designs are awesome. But to have the ability to design something like those other games, but also design this, and still have, have some gamery aspects, but still really the parties first, that's a tough feat, man. That's, that's very skillful designers there. Uh, that's Lorenzo Silva and Yalmar Yak. Uh, this game creates memorable moments. Uh, it's, it is. You're just going to be, again, you're going to be disagreeing on why people did things and you're going to be laughing about it and you'll be talking about these later. Uh, on the negative side, it's a silly party game. It might be too silly for some. Uh, make it, I think it's a blast. Everyone I've played it with thinks it's a blast. After you've been able to play it on here, hopefully you'll know if you like it or not. Uh, but I think you'll you'll know. The only other negative is some of the cards might be too similar. So sometimes you'll get cards that it might be like, I don't know, like like a hike and like wind through trees. And there's not actually cards that say that, but I'm just saying there'll be cards that are like similar. And it can the game's already hard enough. I think it just makes it too hard. So if you get if you're flipping up cards, we just house it's a party game, we just house rule it that uh, if a card comes up that's like really similar to something else, we just like flip it over to the other side. Um, and that seems to help. So that does help necessarily nitpick those two things, but overall, this is a really fantastic fun party game. And because of that, it's getting a Saxo and Serenade, my highest honor, it's gonna be staying in my gaming library. So it's gonna go to my new arrivals shelf and about six months later, once things cycle through there, I'll have to figure out what game on my party section to get rid of to make this one fit. We'll figure that out later. Well, this has been a Game Boy Geek, breaking down barriers, growing relationships through board games, and helping you find the next one you'll love. Hit it. <laughs>